So they admit then they were already engaged in this this uh, project, this um, geoengineering project, a large project, they said. And uh, it's been going on for an awful long time. Britain, by the way, has just been warned it's in for another week of freezing uh, sleet and snow and blizzards in April. But that doesn't matter. We're apparently going to fry to death to see if they don't save us and all that rubbish. Remember, there's different reasons behind all of this. What's interesting, too, in this, uh, this policy implications of greenhouse warming, mitigation, adaptation, and the science base, it starts off with humans are the problem, right out of the Club of Rome, because they're the guys that dreamt that one up, and they're proud to admit it in their own book. So... Uh, humans, it's all to get us to, to depopulate. Uh, mind you, this stuff too, it does mention in the writings in the book that the side effects, some of the side effects will be sterilization of the general public and increased death rate, which is to their advantage, it says. To their advantage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's about, folks. No conspiracy site there. You can go into the government uh, one and find it, their own website. Now, I've mentioned many, many times uh, that you cannot watch, you cannot, cannot watch television and let your brain chill out and just get downloaded. You can't do that. You never could do that, actually, because we've always been brainwashed by everything they put across there. Very clever people know know your mind. Uh, They know how to entertain you and indoctrinate you at the same time. And there's really very old scams that they do, not just the ads themselves. Because now you see the shows themselves are ads to get you to modify your lifestyle. Now here's the nicey nicey story here. This is the nicey nicey one uh, from the Wall Street Journal. What your TV is telling you to do. Very polite, you see. April the 7th, 2010. In just one week on NBC, the detectives on Law and Order investigated a cash for clunkers scam. Remember that? They're pushing that. This happens to be the right thing that's getting pushed, the right. So it's in a story, you see. A nurse on Mercy organized a group bike ride, because we're all supposed to go bike riding now, as the, the, the czar of transportation for the U.S. said that uh, he's not pro-car at all. He's the first government that's not pro-car. They're not going to favor the motorist at all. You know, start riding bikes. Al Gore made a guest appearance on 30 Rock and The Office turned Dwight Schrute into a cape-wearing superhero obsessed with recycling. So these are for, these are for actual programming, not, not ads you, as you see them. It says, coincidence hardly, NBC Universal planted these eco-friendly elements into scripted television shows to influence viewers and help sell ads. The tactic, General Electric Company's NBC Universal calls it behavior placement, is designed to sway viewers to adopt actions they see modeled in their favorite shows. Well, guess where they got it from, folks? Guess about the way that you behave, act, and even swear, uh, and including the clothes that you wear, uh, the shoes that you wear, and um, even your, your personal behavior. You, you've got it all from the television anyway. That's how they get it all done. You are not, you're a composite. You literally are a walking composite of, of, of what's been brainwashed into you by Madison Avenue and the television stations. That's what you are. It says it helps to sell ad to, to marketers who want to associate their brands with a feel-good, socially aware show. Unlike with product placement, which can seem jarring to savvy viewers, and there's not many of them, the goal is that viewers won't really notice that Tina Fey is tossing a plastic bottle into the recycling bin, or that a minor character on Law & Order, SVU, has switched to energy-saving light bulbs. People don't want to be hit over the head with it, says NBC Universal Chief Executive Jeff Zucker. Putting it in programming is what makes it resonate with viewers. TV has always had the ability to get millions of people to mimic a beloved character. And they have. You know, that's what you're a composite. So this article here is from the Washington Examiner. And I've read it before, as I say. And it was from the 15th, uh, the 7th, 09. 
This is President Obama's science czar John Holdren to a controversial and amoral approach to the science of population by recommending mass compulsory sterilization and even forced abortion and or forced marriages. That's for the better types, you know, the ones who wouldn't marry but they, were, they had the better genes. Forced marriages under certain circumstances. Now he's in there now. He's in, he's in there with this gang of collectivists at the top there who want to uh, help their masters dominate the planet. John Holdren. His 1977 tome, Ecoscience, which he co-authored with Paul and Arne Ehrlich, also displays a revealing disregard for the institution of the traditional human family. Well, it says in that other book I read, too, from the government there, their, their, their Bible, uh, that the family had to be destroyed for this purpose. It starts to make sense eventually, doesn't it? I'll be back with more after this break. Hi, folks. This is Alan Watt. We're cutting through the matrix. Uh, reading uh, an article that's entitled Obama's Science Czar, that's John Holdren, Traditional Family is Obsolete, he says, Punish Large Families. And he goes on to say here uh, that uh, radical changes in family structure and relationships are inevitable. They knew that, you see, because we're already under attack, again, through the media and entertainment that, that never showed you a healthy marriage. Everybody's always arguing all the time, and, and it was just a chaotic and so on. It says, whether the population control is instituted or not, inaction attended by a steady deterioration in living conditions for the poor majority will bring changes everywhere that no one could consider beneficial. Thus, it is beside the point to object to population control measures simply on the grounds that they might change the social structure or family relationships. What he's saying, they're kaput anyway, because they're making sure they were kaputs. And that's happened, so they're going ahead. Holdren, with a blithe, of course, encourages governments to wage an effective war on the family in America. It begins with the abolition of uh, uh, pronatalist policies and continues with their complete reversal. This is what he advocated. He's in there now, folks. You better, he, he understands what they'll put in at the right time. This is the right time to put them in. I mean, their masters know what they're doing. Uh, well, it wasn't the, the voters who put these guys in. I hope the people out there realize that. As United States taxpayers know, this is what he says, income tax laws have long implicitly encouraged marriage and childbearing. Such a pronatalist bias, of course, is no longer appropriate. In countries that are affluent enough for the majority of citizens to pay taxes, tax laws could be adjusted to favor instead of penalize single people, working wives, and small families. Other tax measures might also include high marriage fees, taxes on, on baby goods and toys, and removal of family allowances where they exist. Other possibilities include the limitation of maternal or educational benefits to two children per family. Holdren notes that some of these, propo- on, on these proposals have the, the potential disadvantage of heavily penalizing children and in the long run society as well. This is not a disqualifier, though, as long as the proposals are carefully adjusted to avoid denying at least minimum care for poor families, regardless of the number of children they may have. Even here, the objection is practical, not ethical. It's fine to level stiff penalties against those who choose families and children, but not to the point that this policy exacerbates the original problem, which is unwanted children living in squalor, that population control purports to combat. 